You're listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible is Literature. Hi, this is Father Mark Bulos, and you are listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature podcast. This week, Father Paul notes the grammatical interconnection between Exodus and Revelation, which highlights the iconoclastic function of the tent of meeting, in which the tabernacle, covered by the tent, covers the tabernacle, a warning that you are to live in the open wilderness and not as the nations do in temples of stone. I am delighted to introduce Father Paul on the Bible as Literature podcast, Tarazi Tuesdays. In 34, we have the epiphany where God is going to write down another time the tablets. I would like to point out the following. In 34, 1, we have the Lord said to Moses, cut two tables of stone like the first and I will write upon the tables the words that were on the first tables which you broke. It's very interesting that the first tables were written by Moses. The second set of tables are written by God, as per the text. And no man shall come up with you. In verse 3. Why? because not even Moses will be able to see the face of God. And then you have this culmination that I promised you in verses 6 and 7, where in 6 we hear about God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and translation of sin which we heard at the end of 33, but here we have the addition, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. And this is what we do not like to hear. That's why as at Easter, we congratulate ourselves by holding our candles and kissing one another and just lip servicing God with Christ is risen. And towards the end of 34, chapter 34, in verse 28, I want you to hear this. And he wrote upon the tables, And he was there, which is Moses, 40 days and 40 nights in other Ada. And he wrote, again, obviously the one who wrote is Moses. But the mood of the second set of tables is that are written by the finger of God. And he, Moses, wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. But in the Hebrew, we have the ten words, which is the totality. Ten means whatever quantity you might think of. And this is reflected in the word that came to into English and most European languages via the Greek, which is decalog, which is the ten words. Notice you have log. Deca and log. So watch out when you hear in the translation commandments. I mean, you have the word commandments also. But whenever in the original we hear words, we have to keep it as such. And then in chapter 35, before, very interesting, the building material, we have the stress of the assembly that takes place on the seventh day, which is a holy Sabbath and of solemn rest to the Lord, meaning that ultimately you meet 
in the temple or more specifically around or in front the tent of meeting on the Sabbath, not to use it as an excuse not to work as we do in our Christian countries. No, you dedicated to listening to the commandments, the words of God that tell you how you have to live in the following six days until the next meeting. And this is how the Bible gives priority to the teaching, which is something you're supposed to do. Again, as a reminder, Matthew 25. Now, at the beginning of chapter 40, with which I'm ending, you have something very interesting. On the first day of the month, you shall erect, and you have that word, the verb, which is translated correctly in English as erect, which is different than to build, bana, which is the hifil of qam, to stand, and hikim, which means to make stand. It's much more powerful. So, to the ear, it is something that is erected, that stands out. And yet, notice, what God is asking Moses to erect, the house, the residence, or the tabernacles, the tabernacle, notice you have Mishkan and not Mikdash, of the tent of meeting. That phrase is so important that we encounter it at the beginning of chapter 15, of Revelation. It's very impressive because a Greek minded, the Greek Orthodox, and we are all Greek, the Orthodox, you know, you see the Naos, which is the temple. But the real strike in that verse 1 of chapter 15 of the Revelation, you have the temple of the tent of meeting. You have exact the same wording as you hear at the beginning of chapter 40. Very impressive. And again, as I like to tease my hearers all the time, if you don't know scripture, you don't know scripture. And by scripture, I mean the totality of scripture, not the totality of theology, the totality of scripture. And the more you know scripture, the more you know scripture and the more you understand it. So you shall make stand. In English, I have tabernacle, which is used again in the English of RSV in Revelation chapter 15. But it is the tabernacle of the tent of the meeting. Now notice the play that if I ask you to make an icon, of this text. You cannot do it both ways, although in the text you have it both ways. That the tent covers the tabernacle, and in this text it is the tabernacle that covers the tent. And that play is intentional to build up the case that ultimately you are to live in the open wilderness, the way the nations live in their temples. It's phenomenal, phenomenal. And the ending of chapter 40 confirms again, I should be very careful because I sometimes I slip and say my teaching. What I mean is the teaching of scripture is not your theology because it doesn't work with your theology. And I'm going to prove that from the last four verses of chapter 40. 
after 33, where we have again the verb in, he erected the court around the tabernacle and the altar and set up the screen of the gate of the court. So Moses finished the work. But the work of God is not finished. Because the last verses will show us God abiding in that Mishkan. But let's hear how it sounds. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And here tabernacle is the translation of Mishkan with which we started. Mishkan, place of residence. I spoke earlier, but let me say a few words again about it, that the glory, which in Hebrew means weight, weightiness, heaviness, corresponds to cloud, which is anan, which cannot be heavy. I know that in English we can use heavy clouds as though a cloud is still a cloud, whether it's heavy or not, it's not heavy. And I said enough about that. But I can add today, it corresponds to this text we heard earlier, where God is not heavy, he's compassionate, and yet at the same time he is heavy. Why? Because I want you to practice this in all your Bibles. Scratch the word God, and I said this decades ago in my classes, but no one does it. Just cross out God and put judge in its stead. Forget about G-O-D. Because your child can misspell it and ends up with D-O-G, which is dog which is no different than the golden calf. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud abode upon it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle, which means the Lord God is fearsome. Why? Because he's the judge. And that's why the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord and not the love of the Lord, as you hear in theology. Verse 36, throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, notice how the wordings changed and went back to the original. It's playing games on your mind. And if the Orthodox keep reading the Bible, you will not have any more iconographers in Orthodoxy. And I'll be very happy and with me, the Lord God. Throughout all the journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel would go onward. Now, can you imagine them carrying the loaded tabernacle on their backs. It's an impossibility. But for a shepherd, it's easy. The tent is undone. And you carry it. That's what you do in Yosemite Park. You don't take a building on your back take a rucksack and with it a tent. Now you can have fancy tents, I don't mind. But in those times they didn't have fancy tents. The Bible as Literature is a production of the Ephesus School Network.